All right. Um, yeah. And we're live. So we're going to go and look at the game. All right. Welcome back to the channel. We're going to do the recap for the uh, game six um, of the match between Dink and Nepo. Dink uses London system successfully to equalize the match once again. Very interesting choice. There are a couple of things that come to mind and there are some of them a little bit uh, ironic, some are funny. Uh, it's not very often that, uh, hello Mr. Roy, it's not very often that, uh, you know, you see London system being played at the World Chess Championship level, but given the theoretical uh, knowledge and um, a lot of openings that probably both players prepared for this match, it is quite difficult to find something where you can find even a, a hint of advantage with white. Um, so it comes as pretty natural decision for Dink to play um, Hello Mr. Safe Stronger. Um, it comes very natural decision for Dink to play London System. And uh, based on some Twitter from some people or journalists, they say that um, Nepo's team actually you know, consider that uh, London system would be played. And again, it's, I don't know if it is correct, but there are rumors that Kramnik is uh, helping uh, Nepo's team, which would make certain sense, I guess. And uh, Kramnik also helped um, to, do, to, you know, with certain lines in London system. Like, for example, in this game today, we have d4, knight f6. Um, I usually play bishop f4 here or bishop f4 on the third move, but knight f3 is actually a pretty useful move occasionally uh, because then you sort of force black to acknowledge whether he wants to play g6 or d5 first. So this is a useful waiting move. The only time where a knight f3 maybe is not so useful, there are certain London lines where you need to play e3 before developing this knight. Uh, for example, um, there are certain lines, like for example, you play here, c5, c3, e6, knight d2, for example, black plays bishop d6 here. Sometimes you can consider playing this, because then it becomes sort of a slav. And it's very comfortable slav for white, because your pawn is already on f4, and you have huge control of the square. Okay? This is uh, one of those reasons where knight on f3 maybe. Uh, where you can consider not to develop the knight on f3. Um, also in some lines, uh, like a black plays bishop f5, it is useful for white to have this extra tempo to attack here, for example, black plays queen b6, then you get, you save a huge tempo on knight f3 because you start playing b4 and b5, and white is already better because you manage to compromise black's pawn structure here. All right, this is like, a very large positional advantage. So again, there are certain uh, drawbacks and certain benefits of uh, playing knight f3 and bishop f4. Uh, in this game, he plays knight f3 and Snapple responds with d5, bishop f4. This signals the beginning of the London system. Now Black has a lot of moves at his disposal, a lot of ways to play this position. One of the popular ways is to play six bishop d6 immediately. The other way is to play bishop f5 and e6, and the idea to play bishop f4, symmetrical development. Napo plays c5, which is um, the older main line. And again, in this older main line, uh, Kramnik was the one who introduced this move order. I played uh, c3 here, but this runs into the very famous um, bishop f5 thing, and uh, black is absolutely fine. So, Kramnik introduced here knight d2 move order, and um, the idea is that you don't have this um, thing. Still, um, I'm very surprised that Nepo here in this line, um, uh, I was very surprised that Nepo decided to go for this uh, positional line, cd4, because uh, based on the knowledge that, uh, we, that uh, I have, I think queen b6 is pretty critical. And um, 
This is the line, probably both teams had analyzed it because it's super sharp. And after this four sequence, it's probably bishop b5. Black has a couple of moves. He can play g6 or he can play e6 here. And both of them leads to equal positions, uh, but they're seriously wild tactical stuff. But I'm very surprised. Again, if Kramnik is in uh, helping Nepo and he pioneered this thing, he certainly has some analysis in this line. And uh, if they expected Ding to play London at all, which makes sense, um, because London is now very, very popular. And if you play d5, a knight of six, the chances of you meeting London system is uh, in increased, right? Because it's really good against d5. So I'm very surprised that Nepo doesn't have anything prepared here. Uh, looking, uh, looking at the game, it seems that he just decides to go for a, you know, for an unprepared line uh, with basic uh, strategic understanding that you we, that they are playing sort of a Carlsbad reverse line, right? But I mean, uh, he he should have seriously considered if you don't know uh, if you haven't prepared for this game, he should have seriously considered at least playing very famous Wesley so line, which is also pretty safe for black. You know, despite the computer valuation here, you know, computer says this, this, there are a lot of moves. You know, this line is still very, very safe for black. Um, then you can play an 85, g6, f4, and then you have uh, f6, 93, very famous line. And then black plays castles, b6, he can play f5, knight f6, 94. Again, um, but uh, as, we, as we mentioned, uh, as I mentioned before, Dink in the interview, he said he didn't know what to play, but he just wanted to play something solid. And um, if you guys read the, or watched some of my previous uh, recaps, uh, I went over the idea, the strength and weaknesses of both players, sort of. And one of the Nepo's um, uh, sort of weakness, it's not exactly his weakness, but he is not bad at the technical play, but, you know, he is... Uh, excelling at dynamic positions where there's a lot of potential for pawn breaks, where pieces are uh, active, where the pawn structure is unclear. Here, uh, in this opening, the pawn structure is uh, very clear. Uh, it's very rigid. The pieces have very limited roles and uh, you have to be very precise here. This is exactly the kind of position that Ding excels at and Nepo doesn't really like these positions. So psychologically, again, it's a tremendous choice uh, and successful opening choice by Ding in terms of psychology, in terms of uh, getting the position he wants. This is the kind of position that Magnus was uh, beating Nepo with, right? Because Magnus was doing basically the same thing. He was running into these technical positions. He was choosing the openings to dry the position up, uh, to dry uh, the position enough of its dynamic resources so Nepo gets disgusted and then he starts, uh, you know, playing inaccurate moves, etc, etc. And it works! So, but okay, to the game. Bishop f5 is pretty standard. We've reached this, uh, again, crossbar structure, except that now this bishop b5 idea, which I have demonstrated many times in a lot of my games, um, the idea is that um, you sort of want black to provoke the pawn movement. The pawn a7 is actually doing a good job because in this structure, sometimes black plays b6, a7, and you don't allow white to break uh, this pawn because it's protected, and you recapture b6 with this pawn. The presence of this bishop sort of provokes black into playing a6 and weaken the square. Um, also, the idea is that with the help of this bishop, white can look for 95 plan. And um, so black has to play bishop d6, this is pretty forced, uh, and Ding decides to take on d6. However, there is another uh, thing here which uh, must be uh, mentioned, is that you can take this and play b4 sometimes, which also results in incredibly uh, tough uh, positions. But the idea is that you fix black pawn on c6, and you create this incredibly strong outpost for your knight, Thank you for subscribing, Mr. CEB Chess. Uh, all right, good evening, everybody. Uh, yes. Um, so I'm doing the recap and then I'll answer your questions, okay? Um, so again, a5 looks pretty strong. 
then you play a3 and now there are several moves from black to play knight e4 bishop d3 and it leads to very complicated positions if, that you have to analyze uh, probably it's a little bit too dry for white to hope for an advantage but it's also a possibility for white what ding does he just takes on d6 and completes the development what we have is that black has pawns on the color of the bishop and white has a very clear plan where he is gonna use the dark squares he's gonna use knight to e5 he's gonna try to create uh pressure on the uh, queen side white has all the sort of um trumps and black doesn't really have any serious uh, counterplay however that being said uh the position is not that bad for black um it, it, it is still pretty equal um, if you if you watch some of my games where I occasionally play, play London not very much these days but I occasionally play it um, in the Blitz games in tournament play there was a recent title Tuesday game I played recent like two three or four months ago and I played against Duda who demonstrated the correct way to play for black and that is you need to get the knight to d6 as soon as possible the ideal place for any knight that black has either this knight or this knight you need the knight on d6 asap because that knight will be covering c4 square he'll be covering b5 square e4 square uh, it's the best place for the knight in the structure for black and then you will be able to sort of go for this f6 e5 or b5 breaks okay and um right so okay let's go what happened next rookie one Sometimes you want to play bishop f1, um, just put the bishop back, but preparing knight e5. h6 is a little bit careless move by Nepo. There was no danger to this bishop, really. I don't quite understand why would you waste the tempo. Queen c7, you know that white is going to play knight e5, so you would seriously consider playing queen c7 here in this position to meet knight e5, and then you can just grab this knight. So the only question is if you take on a5, where you go? Because if you play knight e4, then this structure is uh, a little bit better for white because of the control of the d4 square. Um, you can never take this pawn due to the pin, where you play f3, okay, and white controls the square. But apparently black can play knight g4 here, attacking these two pawns. You cannot have f4. There is the threat of queen b6. So knight of three must be played. Again, if queen b6, knight d4, white gets an advantage. But there is an f6 idea. And just like in a French structure, if black managed to successfully undermine this pawn, he gets a really great uh, counterplay here. Okay. Um, there is also tactical justification, apparently. If queen e2, grab, 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 queen e5, queen b6, and white has problems protecting this pawn. So black is very, very comfortable. All right, so queen c7 makes a lot of sense, but he plays h6, not life-threatening injury, sort of. Knight e5. The threat is now that you really want to take on c6, play b4, and then black is much worse positionally. So knight e7 is very logical. a4 is very logical. White prevents black b5. But now, uh, Napo plays again a very careless move, a6. As mentioned before, White's idea is to actually make black play this move because then white plays a5 and he gets a really well-known idea with reverse sides of the cross spot with the pawn on a5 and the square under control black will not be able to kick white's knight out of it you play a5 and you put the knight on c5 which will be unkillable and knight will be hitting all the pawns here blocking the c file and white has an advantage so a6 is a very very careless move i was pretty surprised to see this move played by nepo sometimes you just allow white to play a5 here but then black patiently waits for this knight to show up on c5 and then you play b6 and after the trade you take with the pawn on b6 okay um all right hey mr chess uh mesh hagenech uh i'm doing the recap for now live i will do the uh, q a after the recap okay so um we'll we'll do that um yeah but I, I wanted to do it live so i can do questions and answers after the, after it because if i put the, the youtube video of the recap only you guys will not be able to 
answer me some live uh, questions and I really want to to do this separately after the recap okay so uh, a6 I didn't like and here it was absolutely mandatory in my opinion for black to play a5 here absolutely mandatory if you cannot stop um, you know white playing a5 I mean if you cannot if you ruined your already pawn structure like this you have to stop white from playing a5 you have to also put your pawns on the dark squares and then this go, pawn goes here to control the square. You do give away the square in b5, but it's not so uh, bad. Uh, the computer shows the line where you play knight b1, and it makes a lot of sense. You want to put the knight back on b5. However, there is a problem. Um, if you take on b1, then white is just has a superior position. The bishop is very strong. He goes back to b3. Black has no counterplay. However, black has the move queen b6 attacking this pawn directly. This move you often see in a Karakhan. Um, and you, can, you cannot play knight a3 because black queen is able to inf infiltrate out, um, get out of this infiltration by offering the queen trade and then queen moves to d2 to g5. So white has to protect this pawn and if you protect this pawn then black plays knight c6. You challenge this knight and if knight a3, then you can grab, grab, and knight e4. And white is not in time to put the knight on t4. This is a very strong knight. It will be possible to play knight c5, start attacking pawns. And black is just better because, again, the only way to protect this pawn and to prevent f6 is to play queen d4. And then you can just take, take, and after knight d2, rook c8. This rook on a2 is horrible. Uh, black successfully managed to trade this bishop. Knight on b5 doesn't do really much, besides you can take and even play bishop d3 which, with an equal position or you can play rook c8 and try to go for an advantage again because of this terrible placement. So it is absolutely critical, you guys learn that you need to play in this position, you need to play a5, okay? You have to stop white playing a5. I played this idea in so many games in Blitz, in uh, classical chess. And it's a very famous reverse cause bad idea. You know, I think uh, probably everybody knows this. You have to stop a5 because after a5, your white knight gets to c5, white has advantage. So Napo was very, very careless in this game. I'm very surprised. Like, you know, one game he plays like a genius. Like a previous game, he had a masterpiece game, which I, reca which I did recap on. But in this game, he plays incredibly carelessly. I don't know. Uh, this... You know, this instability is what exactly prevents him from playing at the, you know, world champion level, I think. And Ding's ability, you know, to capitalize on his uh, opponent's mistakes, um, it's not like he is really winning the game. He is just using Nepo's self-destruction thing. Yeah, it's amazing. So, 97, he, get, he wants to get rid of this knight, but at the cost of A5... And now it's absolutely clear that this knight has gone up on c5 and the computer already understands this and says uh, white is uh, better. So queen c7, uh, trying to scare white with ideas of b6, but Ding plays very, very accurately, queen f3. White is going to move this queen from the best place. This is the best place for a black queen, so white naturally wants to trade it and he wants to go into the endgame because in the endgame black will be suffering like eternally especially with the knight on c5, because black has no b6 break, then you get the very weak a6 pawn. That means if this pawn is weak, the only way for black to protect it is by playing knight c8, knight d6. So I think knight c8, maybe even here, you know, was pretty good idea, because knight d6, you protect the pawn. Yes, white gets the knight on c5, but you get the knight on d6, which prevents b4, b5 break, it prevents c4, black has a fighting chance, and that's what he had to play. Okay, he, instead he plays rook c8, which makes zero sense. I don't know what this rook is doing here at all. Uh, yes, and okay, he wanted to stop b4. Okay, that makes sense. But rook a3, and, and now what, right? Now you just took away the square from the knight. You need to improve this knight. Um, so bishop g6, knight is going to f5, d6, or so you think. But in reality, he plays knight c6. Okay. While it's true that black can go for e5 break when white plays a5, and I have experienced this plan in my games, but uh, e5 is not uh, enough, okay? 
e5 is not enough even if white just takes on e5 because you have this uh, isolated pawn all right and then after knight c4 white takes and usually gets knight on d4 unchallenged central knight protected pawn on a5 still fixes this weakness and white gets knight and queen versus bishop and queen is still advantage so again knight f5 knight d6 is probably still preferable but white does get advantage but still you have ideas like knight e4 so knight c6 queen g3 prevents e5 temporarily and also offers the queen trade black cannot really accept h4 h4 is standard move in grandmaster chess these days in the previous game Nepo played h4 h5 and then uh, remember of his double f5 pawns move to f6 and thanks to this pawn on h5 you know g6 was impossible so h4 is useful moves in a lot of uh, positions you want to undermine this um, create space potentially g7 also just in case you guys have to remember that in a lot of rook end games when you have four versus three if you manage to get the pawn on h5 if you have four pawns versus three if you get the managed pawn on h5 your winning chances increase okay so um rook e8 black is trying to go for e5 knight c5 and he goes e5 and now ding goes for this a little bit strange tactical thing and immediately uh when you go for a tactical thing nepo gets a chance right so the computer says that you should play b4 i completely agree because um what does black do now you know this thing is spinned Pin queen has to protect both pawns um and black has to play e4 right so and now there are two ways to play the computer is a big fan of f3 but i don't really like it uh and i really like b5 here and the idea is that after this trade black has to play like this you take on c6 and now you just hit this guy hit him very very hard and uh, this position is advantage white okay because uh, you cannot take on b6 because you grab and the spawn on unstoppable is protected by the queen so uh this is advantage white uh, the computer shows that black has to give up the exchange play e3 here but in reality this uh, position is just you know an exchange up for black and um, yeah it is possible to play but um, I, I think it's just better for white but maybe this was uh, the way to play for black if white plays b4 so he plays rook b3 of course you grab rook e5 queen f6 black got rid of the spawn now this knight can be pushed uh, rook a3 and knight c4 all right so it is important to notice that um, black has this move all right the idea is that if you take on d5 then after rook e1 suddenly all white rooks are very awkward and black has incredible pin huge compensation so you must play knight d7 take on e8 and queen c7 or knight c5 queen c7 is more forcing the idea is that you play here or goes to e8 the threat is bishop d3 so you take here now knight b8 knight b8 rook b8 and i think the simplest is rook a1 and just play queen e2 but this gives a chance for black to um, activate his pieces black is only pawned down some good chances to make a draw in this position because white pawns are still not very far um advanced okay and black has a chance to protect this pawn or trade this pawn for this pawn and then we have rook and game which is good chances for black to draw so knight c6 you know going for the active uh, counter play was very interesting instead nepo plays knight c4 and allows white again to reach this position where white has knight queen and rook versus queen and bishop and here dink makes a very uncharacteristic for him inaccuracy he plays h5 but okay granted it's very difficult to see this trick yeah otherwise i'm pretty sure he would have taken on b7 immediately because you need this idea that pawn on c4 is unprotected but the trick is that both players missed it's pretty obvious that both of them missed it and that you can take on e5 some commentators actually notice it and you know the, the, the logical move now looks queen e7 but then uh, this um open king very strong pass pawn and weaknesses here um 
favors white, okay? Advantage white. It's pretty large, very unpleasant position for black. However, there's another move, and it's amazing move queen d8. I, I, I haven't even seen it. Uh, the engine shows it, but it's, it's an amazing move. Um, what's also an amazing is that there is geometry, this pawn and queen. So if you take, there's check, check, and in order to avoid perpetual, you have to play queen h3, but then you take queen e5, and uh, black recaptures the knight and the central pawn, and black is better. And if you play queen f3, black plays queen d2, the same idea. There is a check, queen e5 check, and then black recaptures on c5, and this is a completely different story. Uh, yeah, there is continuation here. Apparently, there is rook a6. Very pretty. Very pretty move, but not effective. Not effective enough because uh, black just plays rook f8. And it's massive trades. And queen hits this pawn, which does not allow white to take any pawns. All right, so very nice uh, engine trick. I suppose, you know, Magnus in his best days would see this. It's, it's very likely because if you remember some of his games against Vichy Anand, they had some absolutely crazy tactics, which uh, Vichy just blundered, yeah? and Magnus just punished him with tactical acuity. So, um, so, but this is important to move because if black bishop has to move, now thanks to this knight, there's a lot of possibility in the future that knight goes to d7, and if king moves to h7, there is knight f8, check, the white rook is present on the 8th. But right now, of course, there is a very direct knight b7, and white has a winning advantage, it's plus 2. So Ding has extra pawn, he has initiative, black has a lot of weaknesses, and it's also queen and knight and rook versus queen and useless bishop and rook. It's like, you know, Kasparov versus Karpov, deja vu again. You guys remember, uh, there was uh, an amazing game where Gary had exactly the same piece um, um, correlation on board. Karpov also had queen, also bad bishop, and also a pair of rooks. Except that they went into the German, but they turned already in the game where white was completely winning. But Kasparov played this uh, position beautifully, and so does Dink. All right, so queen b6, knight d6, excellent move. Knight is improved, knight is hitting these pawns, and he's getting inching closer to the enemy king. All right, queen e5, very, very nice. Centralizing queen, creating knight e8 threat. Black has to take on b2. Rook a5, and now he plays uh, king h7. Interesting nepo move. This is very typical nepo move, but also because knight e8 is a huge threat. Knight e8, and the only way to protect this pawn is by playing f6, and then you have check, and rook is hit, right? So that's why king h7 is played. Again, Nepo's strength is in tactics. I'm surprised he missed this queen d8, but okay. Uh, he is human after all. And now Dink makes a mistake. He plays rook c5. So he plays rook c5 with the idea of activating the rook and go for the attack. Okay, makes a lot of sense, very human move. Uh, apparently the best move to play was queen e1 and just go after this pawn because um, if you take it there is queen e4 check and now suddenly the king on h7 is also hit right and it, it, white, white uh, keeps his winning advantage he plays rook c5 it's an active move but it's a mistake but it's not an obvious mistake and um, it, it, again uh, it is very hard to see this Nepo plays check which is Losing move. He had to take on c3. And the idea is that if you play rook c7, there is queen d2, very accurate move. Rook f7. You cannot play rook g8 because of knight e8, knight f6. Okay? So the only defense is um, queen c1 check. Because if you play queen g5 immediately, uh, you have this uh, trick. And uh, apparently this is much better for white. But if you give a check first, the king is moved away from the uh, influence of the spawn. And then you play queen g5, and now f4 is uh, not so great. Apparently, because not because you take it, but because there's queen g4, and uh, no f5 threats, um, 
and queen keeps an eye on this pawn with the check. All right, so uh, rook f7, queen g5. I was wondering why white can just take this pawn. And then the answer is black takes and plays a5. And this pawn protected by the rook, white has extra pawn. But black has now removed the queens and he has now rook and bishop, which is okay for black. It's possible also maybe to play bishop b3 and go for this um, endgame. But uh, prob yeah, it is also possible, but chances to win for white is great. But if you play a5, it is better for black. Because if knight has to stay and to blockade the spawn, then with the bishop active and rook active, black has very good chance to, to escape with the draw. So Napo missed his chance, right? He missed two chances. He missed the chance with queen d8. And he missed chance with this uh, queen g5. So he gives a check. He doesn't take the spawn. Uh, and he, he probably didn't see this whole mating idea, which apparently is not so simple, but Dink has seen it and it's very impressive. So knight c4, pawn moves, knight e3, uh, bishop b1, because if you play a3 immediately, um, rook c7, and uh, the rook goes behind this pawn. So Napa wants to keep this rook uh, active. So he plays bishop b1, rook c7, it's all forced, knight d5, knight f6 is the threat. So king h8, and now rook a7, and knight e7. It's all pretty much forced now. t5, um, yeah, he's preparing this idea, and Nepo probably haven't seen this at all, and now force mate, yeah. Queen c7, knight g6, and queen f7. Beautiful mating net set up and queen g8, rook a8, and the bishop g6. It's still mate. So, Napo resigns. Beautiful finish by Dink. A little bit inaccurate, but uh, overall, Dink used, uh, again, Napo's mistake absolutely mercilessly. Napo plays carelessly and Dink just abuses this. Yeah. So, the natural idea comes for Napo just stop making these careless moves. And just play normal chess, yeah? Good chess the way he can play. And then Ding will have actually a hard time because um, right now what happens is Ding gets Napo into an uncomfortable technical position. Napo starts playing a lot of unforced errors and Ding capitalizes on it and Ding wins. <laughs> All right? All right, Q&A. Guys, Q&A. Um, what's happening? Uh, this is example of what happens if you do not follow the uh, general principles of chess. For example, again, one of the critical mistakes, as we mentioned, is if you play a6, you don't have to play a6, you should keep the pawn on a7 and b6. But if you play a6, you gotta make sure that you play a5 and you not allow white to get his knight to c5. Right? Because after a5, it's advantage white which only increases. He got very lucky that Ding allowed you know, him to go for the tactics where he recaptured an a5. Because if Ding just played b4, b5, he was probably just much better without counterplay. So, um, as mentioned before, a5 must be played, and then b6, and then you put the knight on d6, and then go for f6 and play slowly, and just, you know, stabilize, equalize, right? And the rest of the game, you know, it's, it's uh, errors here, yeah? Again, I think even if with the pawns like this, if you have the knight on d6, best square for the knight, black has good chances, he plays e5, and then again, we saw that he missed rook e5, queen d8 was an equal position, and then he missed another chance. So, two chances for, for Nepo, um, pretty bad choice. I think if he played a5, he would kind of get his position that he likes. Because then white pieces, they don't have squares, yeah? All right, next question. Um, both players are playing recklessly? No. Nepo is the one who is playing carelessly, not recklessly. Ding is, uh, is just doing his best Ding thing, which is capitalizing his opponent mistakes. Um, Correct. Uh, that's 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 what we just uh, concluded. That the white plays b4, he keeps an advantage. Um, either rule went to allow or not allow knight b5 with a5. Um, 
There is no rule, but in general, the rule is you do not allow this Carlsbad A5 Knight C5 fix. Okay, that's the general rule. Um, what else? Um, was excited to see London in the World Chess Championship. I was... Okay, uh, you know, I, I'm not very much excited. I, I, don't, I don't get easily excited these days, you know. Um, you know, seeing London is okay. London is uh, is as good mainstream opening as any any other. Yeah, with the modern engines, you analyze, you can bring uh, back from the dead a lot of historical openings, and these can still be very playable. All right, the strength of the London is that it's still not fully analyzed like a lot of other openings, like Marshall Attack. Marshall Attack has been analyzed to the end game in a lot of lines. Like to the to the, literally literally to the absolutely dead drawn end games, okay? The opening right to the dead end game draw. The London system has not been analyzed quite there yet, okay? So this is one of the benefits. Also, the other benefit, if your opponent that is a, doesn't expect it, the line that Dink played in this, which is Kramnik line, which is actually pretty ironic. Again, Dink used Kramnik's line. This is Kramnik uh, move order against Nepo, who has Kramnik in his uh, uh, advisory team. <laughs> you know, to me, to me, it's kind of like, you know, it's a small taunt, yeah? And of course, the, the main line here for black is Queen B6, okay? Which is probably, sh will be analyzed after this game. Probably will be analyzed to death. I already analyzed, I spent a lot of time analyzing this line. Uh, there, there's a million of possibilities. It's very dangerous for black, but it's also dangerous for white because if white gets, if black does everything correctly, uh, then white gets weak pawns and uh, he has to look for a draw, okay? But it, it is extremely dangerous but this now, I'm pretty sure this line will be now fully, completely analyzed, yeah? And uh, we will see, hopefully, there will, there probably is no refutation. It's like Poison Pawn in Sicilian Niter, right? It's been analyzed for 20, 30, 40 years. It's, be, it's still being played today, right? And uh, it's still not refuted. And I think Queen B6 is the same in this respect. Um, but again, it's not the only line, right? Um, the whole point of knight d2 is that if black bishop plays bishop b5, now you can take this pawn. And knight protects this guy, all right? That's the whole point. So black cannot play bishop f5. I think you can play bishop g4 though, all right? But then again, there's also bishop b5. It's very complicated. And also e6, and then you can go into Wesley so system with knight h5 here. All right, very, very safe for black, I think. Bishop d6 is a very good old uh, mainline system, London system, which is still playable. Uh, but Nepo going for this, okay? And Bishop b5, and I think it's just a little bit unpleasant. Also, again, I'm su very surprised by this move. This is this is very careless move. I mean, why would he play h6? Nobody cares about this bishop. Nobody has attacked this bishop. But White is clearly wants to play knight e5, and he he wants to already win a tempo. So you know, just move the queen away from harm, so we can recapture this knight. Because in the game later, Napa would play knight e7, but then he would return the queen knight e7. He would still try to trade this knight. But why would he want to trade this knight if he can do it immediately? Yeah, just play queen c7 and just take queen e5 immediately. So h6 was very very careless. Uh, no, I'm not in the Dink's team, but again, uh, London system now has been analyzed. I stopped analyzing, I stopped updating my analysis. I was one of the world's leading experts in this opening, all right? But then, you know, I, I stopped playing competitive chess and uh, I stopped analyzing this opening. And I said, okay, uh, uh, you know, there, there will be other guys who will continue this work. And uh, there have been a lot of people who have been continuing this work, if you guys know. You know, actually, there's this Iranian player named Amin Tabatabai, who recently won Division 3 of the Everything Masters. And he actually used this London system against me. And he played Bishop B5, which is exactly what I recommended for White to analyze. And I couldn't remember my analysis, and I lost the game. So, you know, these days, uh, the chess game is a lot about preparation, memorization, of the lines, yeah. 
So understanding strategy is not enough. You have to know the concrete lines and you have to remember it. You have to memorize stuff. And because I'm not a professional player, I don't have it memorized, okay? So, all right. Um, knight h4 is not, you know, if, if white wants to take this bishop, black should be extremely happy. Because you need the knights in this game for white. You need the knight on e5 and you need the knight on c5. If you trade uh, your knight for the bishop without, uh, and black plays bishop g6, you take on g6, and then what? You got nothing to play with. You got the only bishop, but the bishop in the closed position doesn't do much. You have to play something like knight f3, knight e5, black plays knight d7, and he just laughs, yeah, because there is no threat. And black uh, then uh, pu puts the knight on d6, goes for the standard a6, b5, because you have no knight to go to c5 anymore. You need this knight. You actually need this bishop alive because this bishop is useless. Yes, he does uh, have this diagonal. It looks very strong, but there is nothing on this diagonal that, you know, he, he can hit. So white doesn't actually want to trade this bishop at all. Yeah, you, on the contrary, you want to get rid of your own bishop and then, you know, use your knights to get some squares for your pieces. Although in some cases, yes, if you trade the queens, you trade pair of knights and then black gets knight on d6, then yes, then this bishop, you know, finally starts to play a role because in the end game, you know, this square is important for the rooks, this square is important for the bishop. Yeah, but it's a long way until then, okay? All right, uh, more questions. Um, Vani years have been the thematic weakness of the match, a6, h6, h3, and also very thematic h4, h5, right? Very thematic. Uh, in the past, you know, people have always been wondering why the grandmasters like to push the H pawns. Now, finally, we seeing clear demonstration how dangerous are these H pawns. They create all these threats. Like in uh, game five, without this H5 pawn, you know, uh, Nepo would not find this uh, rook g4, g5, rook g4 idea with then knight g6 and mate, yeah? And in today's game, without this pawn on h5, with knight g6, there will be no mate, because black just takes on g6. You need this pawn on g6 so you can play queen g8 and rook a8 mate. So these pawns, as we have learned now, h4, h5 are very, very important in the attack. Okay? All right. So, um, that was the recap of today's game. I'm going to put it on YouTube later. Hopefully your questions have been answered. And then um, I'm going to start uh, a simul in the in, in next few minutes. Okay, guys? I have to stop the stream for one minute. All right? So I can, you know, put, put it on YouTube later. All right, guys. I'll see you like in a minute. Okay?